I once resided in a home that was undeniably haunted. Today, I'll share chilling experiences my family and I encountered during our seven years in this eerie house. Here are four encounters I had in this home. One afternoon, my father returned home from work to a peculiar sight. He spotted my mother waving from the living room window, a typical scene in our older ranch style house. We had an older ranch home, so our garage door needed to be manually open. My father stepped out of his black Chevrolet truck. He glanced at the window, and my mom stood there smiling at him. He waved to her and walked towards the garage. However, as he tried to open the garage door, it inexplicably jammed shut. He couldn't budge it, despite several attempts. When he glanced toward the garage side door, he witnessed my mother beckoning him, signaling she would open the garage from inside. Assured of her assistance, my father returned to the front of the garage, waiting for the door to yield. He called for my mother, but his pleas met only silence. Perplexed, he turned the garage handle, and to his astonishment, the door opened smoothly. There was no one inside the garage. Inside the house, he called for my mother, but her absence was definitely noticed. He put his keys on the kitchen table and promptly walked to their room. He called for her, but no response came. As he heard the jingle of keys, he returned to the kitchen, only to find the room deserted and empty. An unsettling presence gripped him. Something in his gut was telling him to leave the house and run outside. He dashed out the front door and stood at the sidewalk. There he phoned my mother. It was then that he learned she was grocery shopping at Piggly Wiggly. That was when he realized her van was not in the driveway or garage. Perplexed, he gazed at our home for minutes, noticing movement behind the front window curtains, now drawn shut. They had been open upon his arrival. Unnerved, he decided not to enter alone, waiting for my mother to return. Upon my mother's return, my father recounted his inexplicable experience. Later that night, as I watched TV, my father entered the room, inquiring about my mother's recent request. Bewildered, I informed him that I hadn't heard her calling for him. My father had clearly heard my mother's voice beckoning him from the living room. As he was telling me this, we heard my father's voice from the kitchen. It said, what did you say? The voice was loud and clear but my father was standing right in front of me. We knew this couldn't be him. My father went to the kitchen, but found no one. The inexplicable encounter sent shivers down our spines. I remember the strange energy I felt in that moment. We knew this couldn't be him. My father went to the kitchen, but found no one. The inexplicable encounter sent shivers down our spines. I remember the strange energy I felt in that moment. It definitely added a new level of fright knowing that this thing was able to replicate my parents' voices perfectly. It was even able to fool both my parents. On other occasions, I would hear voices talking in the living room late at night. Most times, it was hard to distinguish the words. If I tried to concentrate on the conversation, the more distant the voices became. Other times, I would hear talking from one room only to find the room empty. One eerie night, my sister and I prepared for bed. Strangely, we heard the sounds of chairs moving in the kitchen. Assuming it was our brothers, we glanced towards the dining room and saw one of the chairs had shifted from its usual place. This was particularly unsettling, since our mother was a perfectionist about arranging things. When I attempted to close my bedroom door quietly, the garbage can was sent hurtling towards me, striking the door with such force I anticipated a significant crack. My sister and I screamed, taking refuge beneath my bed's covers. As my mother entered to investigate, she found trash strewn across the floor, and we spent the night in our brother's room. During the day, we would see cabinets open by themselves. Doors would open and close. The scariest experience I encountered happened on the night of my 8th grade graduation. I was in my room when this happened. I was listening to music on my headphones. The closet door was closed. I was looking for something in my backpack. When I looked up, the closet door opened. It opened very slowly. I instantly backed up against the wall and tried to run for the door. My bedroom door slammed shut. I screamed for help, 
I couldn't get the door open. Then my backpack came flying at me. All the things on my shelf fell off and the covers on my bed were pulled to the ground. I screamed and screamed. My father came running to my room and opened the door. I ran into his arms. I remember crying hysterically. It took me a week to even go back into my room after my parents cleaned it up. We had a priest come, bless it our home, and fortunately never experienced poltergeist activity of this level again. After that, it went back to occasional doors and the cabinet opening. On another occasion, my sister and I were sleeping when I was awoken by my brothers. I have three brothers and they all shared a room. My two younger brothers were pounding at my door and calling my name. When I opened my door, they rushed in and climbed into my bed. I asked them what happened, and one of my brothers told me he had seen a hand reaching out from his closet. Those two brothers shared a bed and they both witnessed the strange-looking hand. They described the hand as having long, slender fingers, dark skin tone, no nails, and small, like a child's hand. I noticed my third brother didn't come into my room. I was too afraid to go after him and locked my bedroom door. The next morning, we asked why he didn't come to my room last night. He told us he heard the two younger brothers screaming and running out of his room. However, when he tried to get up, he felt a force holding him down. He couldn't move and saw the dark figure come out of the closet. He was so scared, his vision went dark. When he regained consciousness, it was already morning. These were just a few of the events that I personally encountered while living in that place for seven years. After the sixth year, my parents' relationship became stressed to the maximum and they started fighting a lot. There was a lot of negative energy in our home. During year seven of living there, parents got divorced. My mother and us left the home. It was a blessing and a breath of fresh air. I was happy to leave that place. My father remained there with my oldest brother. One day, my father and brother abandoned the house, and it fell into foreclosure. This home didn't get sold for another six years. When it finally sold, the new owners completely remodeled the home and yard. Yet, the home was sold four more times after that. Then one day, a family came and stayed. I often wonder if they finally got rid of the thing haunting the home. Subscribe now.